Consider the fact that the knowledge needed for today's innovation has become more diverse, more complex and more global. Also consider the fact that innovation processes have become speedier and innovation cycles have become shorter in many industries. In such an environment, large corporations can no longer rely exclusively on their internal research and development only. Instead, they'll have to find ways to increase their absorptive capacity to tap into external new knowledge to seize opportunities for innovation. In this talk today, Jakob, Robert and myself, we focus on scouting as one of the dominant strategies adopted by many companies in order to seize new opportunities outside and even inside the organization. Current research in economic geography and in organization studies has mainly looked at formal scouting units and formal roles of scouts. And these studies report interesting findings in showing that these scouts are important listening posts for organizations to really have an intake of new knowledge into the firm. However, this is only a partial view because we argue in this presentation that formal scouts only represent the peak of an iceberg of real scouting. In addition to formally assigned roles of innovation scouting, we believe that scouting is an almost natural practice by so many employees and companies in order to screen and, and, and value and transmit knowledge within the organization. Hence, in this paper, we propose a distinction between formal scouting and informal scouting as two dimensions of the overall activity of, of the scouting space. And adopting a relational view, and in particular a network analytical approach, our aim in this, in this talk is to shed light underneath the surface of formal scouting only, to include not only informal scouts, but also all the informal relationships that build up the scouting network of a large corporation. Two research questions are in the focus of this, of this uh, speech today. The first question is, how do formal and informal scouts differ in the scale and the scope of their search activities? And secondly, how does the network of formal and informal scouts mobilize opportunities for innovation? In order to answer these questions, we first have to master um, a very important problem, and that is, how can we make the invisible visible? How can we assess who in a corporation actually does informal scouting? We had the challenge to make the informal side of scouting visible for our research. Thus, we have uh, chosen a twofold strategy, which included our self-classification of scouts and a snowball sampling. Within this research, we had no official database and no data repository where we could simply uh, send our survey invitation to all potential scouts within the company. Instead, what we got was a list of people within the organization who could be potentially scouts. So what we have done is we send it out invitations to all those people and ask them to classify themselves as being either formal scouts or informal scouts by responding to the definition of a scout. A scout is someone who explores external content within a search field and makes it available to the firm as an option for action. If they responded that it was part of their formal job description, we see all those people as formal scouts. If they responded that, yes, scouting is a regular part of my work, although it is not part of my formal role, we classify them as informal scouts. However, this list only covered, where in the first wave, only a small part of all the potential scouts within the organization. That's we, that therefore, we have asked all the respondents to name other people within the organizations who, within the organization who could be scouts. And we send out the next wave of invitations and we have done it fourth and fourth and fourth 
for four times and you see here that we have five waves of response and you see a kind of saturation of those responses. Therefore, we are quite confident that we have really covered the majority of the scouting community within this organization. Given our interest in informal scouting, the first thing what we have done was to distinguish between formal and informal scouts and their different attributes and activities. What we see is that formal scouts are more often involved in projects. That's what you see here over. What we also see is that formal scouts are more often key contacts to external firms and external research and development institutes. We see that although it varies across different business units and it's constantly higher for formal scouts than for informal scouts. While we have seen that uh, formal and informal scouts differ according to their activities, we also see in our results that they differ according to uh, the qualities of innovation opportunities they seek. Concretely, we distinguished between so-called core and radical innovation opportunities, while core of innovation opportunities refer to the search for innovations and innovation opportunities, which are closer to the core technology basis and market of the firm, while the more radical are associated with more breakthrough uh, and new to the firm or emerging market uh, issues uh, of innovation opportunities. If we take this into account, we see that specifically within the research and support units, we see that formal scouts are more, uh, more uh, refer to radical innovation opportunities, while in the business divisions we see more a specialization or concentration on rather core innovation opportunities. Now to address research question two, we're going to look at how formal and informal scouts interact with each other. To capture such interactions, we asked each scout whom of their colleagues have helped them succeed in their scouting. Now, when we look at the general connectivity of this uh, scouting network, we can see that while about 80 scouts are isolated in this network, meaning that they do not have any other scout contacts, over 90% of the non-isolated scouts are connected in a single a cohesive component. And indeed, if we look at the geographical distribution of the scout network, we can see that there are no isolated geographical islands, but instead all scouting sites are in some way or another connected to the main scouting community. Focusing now at the two corporate regions of Central Europe and North America and starting with Europe, we can see that within Europe um, exchange is very balanced among informal and formal scouts where the relatively larger number of informal scouts is offset by higher network activity of formal scouts as measured by their degree centrality. Importantly, we can also see that informal and formal scouts name each other as sources of help to almost equal degrees, which indicates a sort of interdependence or at least the absence of a clear-cut hierarchy among them. Now looking at North America, we can see that the scales are tipped a little bit more in favor of formal scouts. Um, on the other hand, we can also still see a relatively large number of interactions among formal and informal scouts and also um, within informal scouts. Now, finally, looking at transatlantic scout-to-scout -scout relationships, we can see that uh, less than 10% of all interactions take place among informal scouts, and uh, reversely, almost all interactions um, involve a formal scout um, in some way or another. So, as a takeaway, um, while we can see that, especially within the regions, um, scout-to-scout -scout interactions show a kind of interdependence among formal and informal scouts, we can see that across regions, um, formal scouts dominate in exchanges. We also investigate this disproportionate tendency of formal scouts to bridge geographical boundaries with a statistical model, which on the one hand confirms the general tendency, but on the other hand also shows um, that this tendency is expressed to different degrees across the various um, 
divisions of the organization and appears especially in some of the research and support divisions such as research or digitalization. We also applied the same kind of analysis um, to cross-organizational or cross-unit um, boundary spanning ties and find that here the difference between formal and informal scouts is much less pronounced um, and formal and informal scouts engage uh, to relatively similar degrees in cross-unit boundary spanning. We do find, however, that the organizational structure of the firm shapes the structure of the network in a different way. The matrix here shows uh, all ties in the network um, sorted by the organizational affiliation of the sending and receiving scout. It shows that um, while scouts within the research and support divisions are very closely connected to each other, the scouts in the business divisions are on the one hand connected to other scouts within their own business division and to the other also to scouts in the research and support divisions, but they are generally not connected to scouts within the other business divisions, which is mostly represented by the um, empty off-diagonal blocks in the lower left quadrant. We can represent this kind of structure with a reduced form graph as shown here, which really um, makes clear the important structural role of the research and support divisions in bringing together scouting knowledge from the different business divisions. If we again take into account formal and informal scouting, we can see that on the one hand, the business divisions really are the domain of exchange among informal scouts, while on the other hand, within the research and support units, um, exchanges among formal scouts are especially frequent, but we also get overall a more balanced picture. Now, if we remember the, um, the findings on core and radical scouting discussed earlier, we can see how the scouting network really brings together, on the one hand, um, scouting more focused on the core markets and technologies of the firm, which is heavily practiced by informal scouts within the business divisions, and more radically oriented um, scouting, which is mostly practiced by formal scouts within the research and support division. And this could be argued to draw a picture of organizationally induced topical complementarity. Let me conclude very briefly. To our knowledge, this study is the first empirical analysis that includes the informal dimension of corporate scouting. Formal and informal scouts are interdependent. Informal scouts double the scale of opportunity search in our case, and we found that opportunities really travel both ways between formal and informal. Both types of scouts are boundary spanners, but we see that formal scouts are more effective in spanning the boundaries across geographical divides. Now, in terms of preliminary management implications, we suggest that formal scouts should care about the internal redirection of opportunities by spotting informal scouts and by investing in informal relationships and the network of opportunity search. Thank you very much.